good morning church uh, you all know that we are meditating on the passion of jesus christ the sufferings of jesus and uh, soon we are going to uh, celebrate uh, the easter we say celebrate the resurrection of jesus also so, so we are going through these uh, uh, meditations of lent and uh, even in our worship calendar we are meditating on uh, the various events that happened in the life of jesus from uh, uh, from his journey from galilee to uh, jerusalem and ultimately where he is going to be crucified and uh, where he is going to be resurrected from the uh, death so in that journey we have come to uh, and in fact we have meditated on jesus uh, peter confessing jesus as the son of god and we have meditated on the transfiguration of jesus christ what does it mean what jesus was trying to communicate to his disciples and to all of us through the uh, transfiguration and uh, we have also uh, studied about the revelation that god is giving to us uh, uh, and uh, we studied about epiphany as well now we are going to uh, focus and meditate a little bit about uh, the response from jesus till now jesus revealed uh, so till now we have seen peter confessing jesus as the son of god and then jesus started speaking to the disciples about his passion and about his sufferings and the scripture reading we have read is a very well known scripture to all of us where uh, jesus started speaking about uh, uh, his journey to jerusalem where he is going to be rejected by the scribes priest uh, and ultimately where he is going to be uh, crucified and dead and he is going to rise again from the dead um when peter heard these things uh, peter took jesus aside and began to rebuke him saying for be it to you, for be it from you lord this shall never happen to you but he turned and said to peter get behind me satan you are a hindrance to me for you are not setting your mind on the things of god but on things of man just few verses before these we can read, we can we can read that jesus peter was confessing that jesus is the christ the son of the living god and for which jesus said flesh and blood did not reveal it to you but my father who is in heaven he has revealed it to you and i am going to change your name you are no more going to be called uh, cephas or simon uh, sorry you are no more going to be called simon you are going to be called cephas otherwise the rock you are going to be called the rock or even the word peter means the rock on which i am going to build my church that looks like such a great glorious and grand uh, grace that god had given to uh, peter and he appreciated him and praised him among all the disciples and it was such a wonderful experience uh, for him that right after that this crazy event took place since peter received the revelation from the lord that jesus is the son of god it is written since then jesus started speaking about his passion death and resurrection peter is someone he is the chief of all the apostles peter is someone who who received the revelation from the father directly and he is part of the core team of jesus christ and he is so friendly that who that he could even counsel jesus and rebuke him can we dare to correct our superiors can we dare to correct our masters and teachers can we dare to correct mr zakaria <laughs> and in such a way uh peter came and he he was so comfortable with jesus and he was ready to go and uh rebuke jesus such a great relationship peter has but at the end what we can see is jesus was calling him get behind me satan what was the problem was jesus or what peter not believing what jesus said no peter believed each and every word jesus said he believed absolutely and everything that jesus said or did peter understand what jesus said yes peter understood what jesus said but the thing is peter's understanding may be quite different from what jesus opinion is about 
Jesus was thinking about something. Jesus has a perspective. His perspective is different from the Peter's perspective. What Peter understood, was it wrong? No. Jesus said, the Son of Man is going to be hated. He is going to be killed. He is going to die. Uh, sorry, and he is going to raise again from the dead. Ultimately, what he said was, your master is going to be rejected and uh, he is going to die and raise again from the dead. Did Peter reject it? No. Absolutely, Peter understood that. But uh, his understanding is different in this sense. Jesus said, we are starting the journey. In the next few days, I am going to be killed and rose again from the dead dead what peter's understanding was every man who was born have to die put in a wadu gitta ka tapadu so jesus is also going to be dead he is chosen to be a master and leader and a king so this is very normal for kings to die violent death okay so he is understanding okay everybody have to die jesus is going to die and every righteous man in jewish nation are going to rise again from the dead so jesus also is going to rise again from the dead you remember martha and mary the sisters of lazarus jesus came and said your brother shall rise again from the dead what did martha said i know lord he is going to rise again on the resurrection day where when is the resurrection day the resurrection day is going to come at the end of the world at the last day then the dead in sorry the righteous people who ever dead they are going to raise again from the dead so here in the similar manner peter also was understanding that jesus is a righteous man like puttina vaadu getta ga tappadu gettina vaadu mari tirigi janminchaka tappadu mari tirigi leyali he has to raise again from the dead and he will raise again from the dead that is the understanding peter has was it anything wrong no that was the common jewish belief of that day but that is not what jesus was trying to communicate to peter peter jesus was telling him i'm going to die in the next few days i'm going to rise again from the dead the end of the days has come the kingdom of god has come that's what jesus was teaching to him though peter received the illumination and revelation from the father through which he confessed that jesus is the son of god he had different connotations for the word son of god though he received the revelation that jesus is the son of god he had his own carnal and fleshly understanding of what does it mean to call messiah is for him the messiah is something different from the kind of messiah jesus is when jesus said repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and now we are going to jerusalem this is what peter understood the time has come for the fulfillment of the preaching of jesus that the kingdom of god is at hand and now jesus is leading us and taking us and we are going to jerusalem so that we may capture the throne if you read the next chapter we understand that jesus was going to jerusalem he was not just going to jerusalem with uh, 12 disciples if you read mark chapter 10 we understand that jesus was going to jerusalem with the 12 disciples and the big group of people so many followers of jesus were following him it looks almost like jesus is going taking a huge army some hundreds and thousands of people were following him and with them he is going to jerusalem and now peter he is looking all of this and he thought the kingdom of god is at hand means the time has come now our master jesus he is going to jerusalem and he is going to kick the pontius pilate out of jerusalem he has all the miraculous powers okay he is not someone small no sorry he is not someone small he has all the miraculous power though rome may have some legions of uh, army but you know what he is someone who calm the sea can he not overcome the soldiers easily he is someone who casted out all the demons can he not uh, cast out uh, uh, herod and pontius pilate from the palace oh ye iska baaye haath ki khel hai you know he can easily do it that is what peter understanding 
and but unfortunately jesus is speaking something entirely opposite to what peter was expecting at the beginning of this journey at the begin at the beginning of claiming the kingdom itself jesus started speaking about his death which is completely disappointing to peter because according to peter and according to most of the disciples of jesus also giving oneself into the hands of enemy is defeat in itself they are expecting him to be the messiah messiah means the king of the jews and he is leading people to jerusalem in the first step itself he's saying i'm going to be killed what messiah is he what kind of kingdom he is going to raise what kind of kingdom he is going to establish he is he is going to be killed over there so jesus speaking the words of his death are def, uh, defeat in itself the beginning itself he started speaking about his own defeat giving his hand, himself into the hands of violent people and enemies he is the de defeated in itself and the death of the leader is the death of the movement Jesus led a great movement there and these thousands of people were following Jesus looking at the gravity of the moment looking at how intensely the following was there how greatly my people were following Jesus seeing that surely he is going to become messiah if you remember after his resurrection do you know the two people who were going to uh, Emmaus what do they say oh we expected that Jesus is the the one who is going to be the king of the israel but he was killed that's what they said so all the disciples all this multitude thought he is going to be the king and this man uh, and they were following him and he is talking about death of himself which means the death of the leader is mostly the death of the movement so that was jesus peter understanding and uh, the only way Yeah, one can claim the kingdom is by claiming authority over political bodies and the military. That is what Peter's understanding about the kingdom. Jesus is going. He's now. He got all the people. He collected all the people. Now he is going. He can throw down the political people, leaders, and he can establish the kingdom. He can take over the military. For Peter, what Jesus is talking makes no sense. and what jesus said could not show any future and that is the dead end the road that ends as we have seen uh, even in the uh, speaking of life the way jesus chose looks like dead end to peter what jesus is talking about is not fitting with jesus um, uh, what jesus is talking about is not fitting and the path jesus has taken is completely wrong that is the reason peter he tried to rebuke jesus or correct jesus he put all his hopes in jesus expecting jesus to become the king and according to him only by violence taking over politics and army only kingdom can be established then jesus called him get behind me satan you are not mindful of the kingdom the things about the kingdom but you are mindful of all the carnal things only it looks something very uh, very strange jesus is comparing or calling peter satan what is the problem here the problem is very simple jesus is not personifying peter as satan the thing is jesus is correcting the attitude of jesus peter peter is the one who received the revelation from the father that jesus is the son of god that is the divine revelation he received in spite of re receiving the divine revelation he filled his mind with all carnal thinking with all carnal understanding of messiah so carnal understand in spite of receiving the revelation what he chose was he chose to believe his own flesh and blood jesus said flesh and blood did not reveal it to you but my father in heaven who revealed it to you but here peter is choosing again flesh and blood which we can call it willful ignorance he received the revelation but willfully he is keeping it aside and he is thinking again 
fleshly. Willful ignorance. You know, the definition for evil, the definition for the evil is willful ignorance. Knowing the right knowledge, rejecting it and believing the wrong thing. That is willful ignorance. Many a times we, we do that. We know what is right, but still we choose what is wrong. That is called evil and Satan is called the evil one. So he is rebuking the attitude of Peter. However, do you, do you really think it was Peter only would be, would be called Satan? I believe if I was there, I would be called Satan square. And I also think like Peter and maybe even more than Peter like that. And all of us. I don't think that any disciple, the eleven disciples who were standing there, they understood the kingdom of God better than Peter. All of them are having similar understanding only. And Peter is the one who was caught. <laughs> and he spoke and he was caught. That's all. It is because the way of the world is entirely different from the way of the kingdom of God. The way of the kingdom of God is entirely different. That's why the way of the world cannot comprehend it. That's why Jesus said, flesh and blood cannot reveal it to you. But my Father in heaven only can reveal it to you. So, just to understand the difference between the way of the world and way of the kingdom, let us look at little bit geometry, please. Forgive me, nowadays I got interest in geometry. So, <laughs> let's look at little bit into geometry. Okay? How different the way of the world and way of the kingdom is. These are train tracks, right? Can any time, any time, can these tracks intersect each other? Otherwise, we call them parallel lines. Can any parallel line intersect each other? Is it possible? Go miles and miles and miles. Can train tracks get intersection? No. Right? But in reality, you know what? Can two parallel lines intersect each other? You said? No. The reality is, two parallel lines on a 2D plane cannot intersect. If you go to a 3D plane like spear, you know what? These two lines, these two lines are actually parallel. These two lines are parallel. And all the parallel lines intersect in 3D world, in the sphere. All the parallel lines intersect. In the 2D plane, no, they can never interse intersect. Here, they can intersect. Let me, let's go a little more. Can we draw a triangle which sum is more or lesser, more uh, greater or lesser than 180 degrees? How many degree angles are there in triangle? Three. What is the sum of the three angles? 180 degrees. Can we draw a triangle with more than 180 degrees or less than 180 degrees? Huh? We can't, right? But what about this? This is a triangle with more than 180 degrees. On a 2D plane, uh, or which you call Euclidean geometry, you know, on the 2D plane, you cannot draw a triangle which is more than 180 degrees. You can draw a triangle with exact 180 degrees. But go on to a spear. If you take a spear and try to fill it with all the triangles, you will come across various triangles which are more than 180 degrees. And can we draw a triangle with less than 180 degrees? I'm saying no, right? But let's see this. This is a hyperbole. Here, you can draw a triangle with less than 180 degrees. Here, you see, here is a triangle. These triangles are each angle is less than, uh, I mean, or the sum of these three angles is less than 180 degrees. So what is happening? In a 2D plane, there are various laws of the nature. There are various understandings, which, may, uh, which we feel uh, this is how it used to be, it has to be and it will be. And when they change the plane, when they enter into the 3D world and they are completely 
<laughs> no sense. Right? Let me ask one word. This, this is how. You know, in a sphere, a triangle will have more than 180 degrees. On a plane flat, which is 2D plane, where you will have some of the angles is 180 degrees. And in a hyperbole, you will find less than 180 degrees. And let me ask two more slides and questions and it will go. Which is the shortest distance from India to America? Which is the shortest distance to travel? Red or black? It appears red. Right? Very few. Just here you take one, two, uh, it maximum three inches. Okay? The other one, it looks the curve. It looks like it is the far distance, I mean longest route, but reality that is the shortest route. The curve is the shortest route from India to America. The, instead of going India to Africa to America, it looks straight and easy, but going Europe and in fact I heard like they touch North Pole also. They, certain routes they touch North Pole to save distance and they go to uh, USA. Okay, such a curve. And we say, why, why don't we go in a straight line? It is simple, no? But on this plane, the straight line is not the shortest route. The curved line is the shortest route. What is a straight line? But a straight line, by definition, is the shortest distance between two points. Is it a straight line? Yes. Is it a straight line? No. Let me show you one more. This is a hyperbole. Here one point is there, here another point is there. What is the shortest route would be? It appears like the straight line. But the shortest route will be like going around and going up. Shortest straight line is the shortest distance between uh, the two points. Let me ask you, this is the last question. Which is the straight line in the following? Okay. Which is the straight line in this? Green. Is green the straight line? But in reality, this curve also is a straight line. This curve, this wave also is a straight line. The straight line, this one, is a straight line only in Euclidean or 2D plane. Curve is a straight line in 3D plane. And this wave is a straight line in multiple dimensions. The hyperbole you talk about, any, many more may be there. But all these three things are straight lines. So can you see what is happening as the dimensions are added, the laws in the nature are being changed. The laws in the nature are no more effective. And some places the laws in the nature are proved wrong. Like in a 2D plane, two parallel lines cannot intersect. But what, what happened in the 3D line? 3D plane, they are intersecting and in fact they have to intersect and in 2D plane we have seen the straight lines are the shortest distance which are visible directly we can see easy way we can go but in reality in the 3D plane and on the higher dimension what we are seeing the curved lines are the shortest and sometimes the crooked ways are the shortest. Straight line is not a straight line anymore. In the higher dimensions. So it is breaking all the natural laws. It is beyond the natural laws. So similarly the way of the kingdom seems long and it looks crooked and it looks dead end. So imagine you started your journey from here. Can you see your end? No, you cannot. If you are here, easily you can see your destination. In the, in the higher dimensions, the ways are crooked. Similarly, the king, in the kingdom of God, the ways are different. They may look uh, long, they may look crooked, and they may look dead end. But in the kingdom of God, all the human laws, all the human ways, all the human work is going to be defiled and it is going to be proved wrong and in the kingdom of God things are working beyond our human understanding. That is the reason Jesus said, flesh and blood cannot reveal it to you. 
with our flesh and blood with our understanding our education with our wisdom and with our own experience we may not be able to understand the ways of the kingdom the king uh, sorry the kingdom of god is of a higher dimension probably of infinite dimensions because our god is infinite right our god is 2d or 3d or 4d or 5d i believe he is multiple infinite dimension in the god of infinite dimensions and in his kingdom his kingdom is of infinite dimensions so ours is only just 3d dimension world and the kingdom of god is multiple dimensions world so the kingdom of god is of higher dimensions probably it's of infinite dimension that's the reason when jesus preached the kingdom of god is at hand he means kingdom of god entered into the human world into its limited dimensions there is an intersection between the limited dimensions of life and multiple dimensions of life that's how kingdom of god entered into the kingdom and people are not able to understand because we are limited with our understanding our understanding was limited to few dimensions only but the kingdom of god is of infinite dimension that is a, that is the reason we don't understand the things of the kingdom directly we understand the things of the flesh only in reality we don't understand the things the way they are even if you are seeing you are seeing this uh, presenter right you don't understand the presenter as it is you understand the presenter according to your perspective we don't understand anything as it is we understand the things the way we are we don't understand the things the way they are but we understand the things the way we are according to our perspective that is the reason in a particular given event there may be many people but each person will come with different perspective of the event it's because we don't understand things as they are <coughs> we understand the things by what we already know but what we are by and by what we already believe that is the reason we can un, we cannot understand the way of god we cannot understand it with the flesh and blood and we need the revelation of god and here comes peter he is trying to understand the kingdom he is limited to his limited dimensions like us and jesus is talking about establishing the kingdom which is of sufferings so the kingdom of god is of higher dimensions that's why peter could not understand um and in the higher dimensions the reality is beyond our imagination and beyond our present understanding and the shortest way is not the straight way but a bumpy and cur curvy way and parallel lines can uh, intersect and triangles can be uh, it does not require to be 180 degrees they can be anything and all the laws of the 2d world and the our world will be defied in the kingdom of god that is the reason peter could not understand the way of the cross when jesus spoke about establishing the kingdom he is talking about the sufferings but according to the flesh and blood we know we cannot establish a kingdom with suffering you can establish a kingdom only with guns and rifles that's what peter understood if you don't have guns and rifles at least you have the power to bring the fire down from heaven You remember the two disciples of Jesus one day they were talking to Jesus when Jesus spoke about a particular village and it was evil and what did they say shall we call the heaven to rain the fire you remember that <laughs> that's what they understand and if we are there we also would understand the same we also would call for fire from heaven to establish the kingdom and but here jesus is talking about humility here jesus is talking about violence not the violence he can execute but the violence to which he is going to submit submitting oneself to the violence is a dead end to establish a kingdom that is the way of the world that's why peter could not follow the way of the suffering is the highway in the kingdom but for us it looks the crooked way how difficult it is the way of suffering is the most impossible and difficult one and but jesus here is talking about the way of suffering but in the kingdom of god it is the highway but we always seek the easiest and shortest and the most comfortable ways right that's what humans are you know the temptation jesus got 
the temptation jesus got also is the same thing why don't you establish the kingdom in easiest way jesus he wants to establish the kingdom by going through the suffering passion death and resurrection and what did satan said eh don't be worried about all those there is a easiest way to establish the kingdom what is that all these people are suffering for food what you do there's a big hill here turn the stone into bread and all these people will be fed right their problems are gone all these people are suffering with the fear of romans they may kill them today tomorrow any time there there is no security for their lives what is the easiest way no problem very simple call upon the angels they won't let you let your foot hit the hill uh, hit the stone they will protect is it easy for jesus to turn the hill into his bread easy can he call upon angels legions would come <laughs> right and the last thing uh, you are thinking you want to go to jerusalem and you want to uh, be hated by the pharisees be hated by the scribes hated by this priest and people are going to torture you persecute you there and they are going to kill you you have to be on the cross for such a long time and suffer and die you have to spend in the grave for 3 days and raise again from raise again from the dead why such a crooked and difficult way simple bow down to me i'll give you all this kingdom you establish the kingdom you take the kingdom which is easiest way for jesus bowing down to you satan is the easiest way but he has chosen the way of the kingdom bowing down to satan if i was there i i don't know i may choose i may get tempted i'm i'm i'm, I'm just telling you sincerely of myself but jesus did not choose that he did not choose the way of the world he chose the way of the kingdom though it is hard difficult and it is crooked the end is not visible from the beginning and the same thing satan tempted in jesus life also and peter also doing the same temptation why are you talking about your suffering your death and resurrection simple avoid it don't go <laughs> let it not happen to you he wants to choose the easiest way he wants to choose the way of the world but the kingdom of god is entirely different in the kingdom of god the first will be the last the last first many a times we say this but we don't understand first will be last the last first one small example i would like to give you the disciples of jesus came to him these are called sons of thunder uh, james and G- john and said when you come in your kingdom give me the opportunity to be to sit on your left hand and right hand right hand side jesus said <coughs> it is not in my hands it is in the hands of the father and who got do you know who got the opportunity to sit on the right and the left hand of jesus the two thieves two thieves who got who were crucified with jesus one was on the left the other one was on the right and one of them entered into the paradise with him <laughs> okay why am i saying you're saying cross that is suffering the cross is the place where the glory of god revealed according to john the great glory of god revealed in the cross when the great glory of god revealed in the cross john and james were not in the right and left of jesus the two thieves were there because it was given to them to be on the right and to be in the left and that's why jesus said the first will be last the last first right so the kingdom of god is different the glory of god is different and the way of the kingdom is different it's entirely beyond our understanding so the way of the suffering is the way of the kingdom the that is the reason jesus also told his disciples if anyone would come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever would save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it whoever saves his life will lose it whoever loses his life for my sake will find it A simple question is how do i know once i lost my life i lost my life and i won't be there even to think whether i got the other life or not 
we don't know it doesn't look the end doesn't seems clear to us but the way in the way of the kingdom it is entirely different the though the end doesn't look clear we have faith in jesus and those who lose their life for jesus they will surely find it because the kingdom is of higher dimensions than our world our laws won't work there and the kingdom works in its own laws here's the greatest thing is uh, sorry uh, here the least is the great and the great is the least and just as i said here parallels can intersect perspectives of the claim, uh, claiming the kingdom and suffering can intersect and the kingdom can be established even through suffering these two are doesn't work humility and establishing kingdom don't go together in our world but in the kingdom of god the kingdom of god suffering and uh, claiming the kingdom both can intersect both can go hand in hand as here triangles don't need to have one uh, in the greater kingdom no need to have 180 degrees the cross does not need to be limited with shame you know the cross was considered as the shameful thing in jesus times that's the most shameful death and the shame that was given by roman authority and roman power and lot of people tried to fight against the roman power and some of them could establish the jewish kingdom for a couple of years simon bakok by i'm talking about they fought against it but jesus he did not fight the shortest route visible in our understanding he chose the way of the cross which is suffering you know what happened he chose the way of the cross which is the shameful thing and the suffering and he had he underwent suffering he was resurrected you know now where the cross is now the cross is not under the foot of romans but now the cross is on the head of the romans cross is on top of all the roman empire <laughs> right cross was the shameful thing and peter said don't take the cross and jesus said no i am choosing the suffering peter said no this suffering and establishing kingdom don't work they won't intersect it is not possible you cannot establish the kingdom with suffering just like you cannot draw the triangle without 180 degrees you cannot do that but jesus said no i'm going to take the cross i'm going i also i would like to ask you you take the cross what happened jesus took the suffering and the same cross sitting on the head of roman empire and it is it is ruling even today and you know second person who was holding the cross is peter peter is saint peter basilica even we talk about i'm not talking about a denominations and all that's not the thing like an analogy we can see the cross is in the power here the suffering shame without any violence has taken and established the kingdom that is how the ways of the kingdom work the way of the cross work which peter did not understand and he suggested the way of the world and jesus said who ever wants to follow me take up your cross and follow me and my brethren choosing the cross sounds very difficult for all of us choosing the cross seems dead end to us choosing the cross seems unclear and we don't feel we may be able to achieve the kingdom okay and lot of peer preachers preach god chose you to reign in the world yes god chose you to reign in the world but he did not choose the way you should reign in the world by with your money or with your power or with your uh, what we call position or position he wants you to rule the world carrying the cross he did once he carried the cross and he established its kingdom and he is ruling that and he wants you to rule the world how you can do that is by carrying your cross carry your cross and eh? rule the world that is the way the kingdom works and unfortunately peter 
could not understand. So I encourage you, my brethren, let us not be discouraged. Let us not lose our heart to choose the way of the cross, way of the suffering. Maybe you may be going through various situations in your life which may be sufferings to you. Don't try to escape and run away from them, but embrace them as Jesus did. Don't feel ashamed of it, but embrace it because tomorrow it is going to become your glory. When you embrace the suffering, when you embrace the cross, the victory is certain. It is for sure. And that is the way of the kingdom. So may God grant us his grace so that all of us may be able to cross, carry the cross, the, uh, carry our own cross and follow Jesus. The twelve disciples, uh, among twelve, at least eleven of them, they carried the cross. And you know what the world called them? These people turned the world upside down. It was said about the apostles. They turned the world upside down. You know how they are impacting, how they are influencing even today. May God grant His grace so that we may be able to take our own crosses and follow Jesus.